Hello again. Welcome to the part two of Managing Information Technology series. Today we'll be talking about portfolio management. Now it is said that project management and portfolio management differ in that project management means doing things right, while portfolio management actually means doing the right things. Um, why is that? That's because project management teaches you how to do the proper things in managing a project. In portfolio management, what one learns is really how to select the correct projects to do and to give it sufficient importance in alignment with the company's overall strategy. Imagine the situation where you're given a bunch of projects to manage the resources for in order to do that and you're told to actually make these projects perform. That actually is an example of portfolio management. Or another situation, you're handling operations and suddenly you're given projects related to those operations and told to actually manage these as well. That's another example of portfolio management at work. Now, in essence, portfolio management is nothing more than what is shown in this slide, wherein the portfolio manager has projects as well as operations underneath him. These may be further subdivided into sub portfolios with their own manager. And in general, in an IT organization, the overall portfolio manager is really the CIO. The overall portfolio manager in a company would be the CEO, and the CEO would also have his own set of portfolios. Now, typical portfolio manager questions would be things like, which components in my portfolio are really priority? What resources do I allocate to them? Are there new projects or do I have to come up with a new operation line that I need to create? What about these projects? Do they still make sense? What about the components of my portfolio? What are their progress? Are they doing well? Are they meeting their objective? Am I finding out about an operational issue? Am I finding out on time? What is really the status of this particular project? Now, probably this is the most important slide in this whole deck, which defines the portfolio life cycle. First of all, you have governance, which rules all the portfolio and its components. Governance refers to the rules and policies which the whole portfolio needs to adhere to. Monitoring and control, on the other hand, is the regular, regular monitoring of the portfolio components to see if it's doing well and control in case there's problems. And inside it is a cycle. And this cycle starts with planning and design. When a portfolio component, for example, a project, is initially defined, it goes into assessing and communicating wherein the portfolio component, for example, the project again, is assessed on how it's doing and the results are communicated to the different stakeholders. And then from time to time, there needs to be a rebalancing, which basically means to align all the portfolio to the overall strategy of the company. Now let's go to each of these. Let's start with governance. And what is governance? Governance really is all the rules, all the policies by which all the portfolio components need to adhere to. And this gives an idea of what can be done and what cannot be done and what needs approval and by whom. Now, governance may sound like policing, but actually it's not. It's really there to help the project managers and the operation managers in doing their job. Let me give an example or several examples where governance comes into light. For example, a project runs into problems and the project manager's first question is, who do I run to for help? 
or if the scope of the project is changed, who can actually approve this change of scope? Or if you need additional funding for the project, or you need additional resources, be that from operations or from another project to be allocated. Or a bad word, I have a change request. What do I do? Who can I help? Who can approve? Remember, governance is not the same as monitoring and control. In some companies, you may have strong governance and without the need to monitor and control every little thing. But the culture in other companies may be totally opposite. It may be monitoring and controlling everything, but in reality may have very poor governance. These two are not one and the same. So what about monitoring and control? Monitoring and control really means being able to assess the performance of the project or operations and how it's doing. If we're talking about projects, <clears throat> there are indicators, and I advocate especially those used by the PMI, uh, like schedule performance index or cost performance index. It gives you a good idea of the performance of the project. Percentage completion is another typical indicator used, as well as projected target completion if it's running late. As a portfolio manager, I want to regularly monitor the progress of my projects. Take this project. This project is 84% complete. If I go now to the scheduled performance index, I see that it's 0.88. That means it's 12% delayed versus the baseline. I now open the issue registry and I can see the issues that have been logged. If I now open the request registry, I can see the different requests that have been logged. Now, if you see this past few slides, what I've used are very simple tools which allow me to monitor the status of my projects using only a few clicks. A few clicks will enable me to know exactly how I'm doing and I can now drill down and get the details from the project manager if needed. Now let's go into the cycle, the cycle by which a portfolio lives. Firstly, is what we call planning and design. Planning and design starts when each component of the portfolio is defined. Each operations line, each project is described. We typically would have this set of parameters defined into it, including the scope, the resources that we allocate, the tools, estimated duration, and other information that may be needed. One parameter that is of particular importance is assets. Assets refers to people, to tools. In the IT world, this generally refers to hardware and software. Fixed assets, such as offices, plants, vehicles, as well as uh, training rooms, and the money that is assigned to each and every project. Another regular process now would be portfolio assessing and communicating. And this is where the performance of the portfolio components is measured and reported. Typical metrics may be financial, such as ROI and PV, but IT projects are particularly difficult to measure in this way. So we usually refer to SPI, CPI, as well as other parameters that may be relevant to the business. This will also involve a communication plan wherein the different stakeholders are informed of the performance of the portfolio. Um, this is done on a regular basis and the best way of communicating to each stakeholder is also defined. Sometimes this plan may not be defined explicitly, but it's implicitly understood by each and every one of the project managers or operation managers involved.
Now, from time to time, portfolios need to be rebalanced. Why is this? What does this mean? Remember, company strategy is not static. It changes with time. It changes due to the market conditions. It changes to competitors. It changes due to many reasons. And so rebalancing and refocusing of what is important to the company is normal and should be done on a regular basis. And thus, the components of the portfolio will receive different importance as you go along with time and as the company changes. So rebalancing generally may be due to a changing business strategy of the company, or maybe due to a reorg within the company, or even the availability of portfolio assets, wherein due to limitations, not everything can be done by the company at some point in time. Now I call this the sad project manager syndrome. And I'm sure you can relate if you've been a project manager. How many times has it happened that your project is running on time, it's delivering its output, it's below budget, and yet at some point in time it gets cancelled. And you ask why? And it's really beyond you. And it's simply because the strategy of the company has changed. And the importance of this project is not as much as it was before. And so in summary, a portfolio manager has a very important job. He's the one that aligns the priorities of all the projects and operations that he handles with that of the company. We have to remember that our assets are really limited and they need to be optimized in their allocation, whether those are people or funding. It's also the portfolio manager's job to seek for additional resources and manage the expectations of the shareholders if these are not met. Um, seeking for additional funding, people, or even time. Well, that's all for now. If you need more information, uh, I can refer you to my book called Managing Information Technology, available on Springer and Amazon. So for today, I'm calling it off from this tropical island. Bye-bye.